Most people don't believe me when I tell them my husband was murdered by a werewolf, the beast that in Louisiana they call the Lou Garou. So I'm telling my story, but not my name, as anonymity is the only protection I have from ridicule. It was bad enough to lose the love of my life so violently, but it just makes the pain that much worse when people disbelieve the truth when I speak it. Hell, I probably wouldn't have believed it myself if it didn't happen to me. My story begins on Fat Tuesday in the Big Easy. We were tourists having a good time, but we had no idea what evils the day had in store for us. The vibrant heartbeat of New Orleans during Mardi Gras was irresistible. The city cloaked in a kaleidoscope of colors, alive with the thrum of jazz and the cheer of the crowd, promised an escape, a celebration like no other. We were eager to lose ourselves in the festivities, and we arrived with hearts full of excitement and minds open to the adventures that lay ahead. I remember our first steps on the cobblestone streets, how the air was thick with the scent of good food and spilled cocktails, a tangible reminder of the city's indulgence and spirit. It was our first Mardi Gras together, a honeymoon adventure, a chance to weave new memories into the vibrant tapestry of our shared life. My husband was the more daring between us, and his eyes sparkled with a mischief that mirrored the city's own. In that moment, we were just two souls among many, drawn to the pulse of New Orleans, unaware of the shadow that would soon fall over our joy. Our wanderlust led us through the French Quarter, past musicians whose notes seemed to dance in the air, and revelers whose masked faces added to the carnival's mystery. And then, like a scene from a forgotten tale, we stumbled upon it, an old voodoo shop nestled between the neon lights and the festive chaos. Its presence, ominous yet inviting, whispered of secrets and stories untold. Curiosity, that fickle friend, nudged us through its ancient door into a world far removed from the celebration outside. The shop was a cavern of wonders, shelves laden with strange herbs, bones and artifacts, each carrying whispers of the old magic that pulsed through the city's veins. It was here, in the dim light of that shop, our story took its first dark turn, though we were blissfully unaware of the nightmare that awaited us. Our laughter, light and unburdened, filled the space, a prelude to the horror that would soon unfold. Little did we know, our fates were about to be irrevocably changed, and the vibrant celebration of Mardi Gras would become the backdrop to our own tale of terror. The air inside the shop was heavy, laced with the scent of incense and old earth, a stark contrast to the festive atmosphere we had left behind. The shop owners, a man and a woman whose ages seemed as indeterminate as the origins of the objects that surrounded them, watched us with an unsettling intensity. Their eyes, dark and knowing, followed our every move as we navigated through the labyrinth of curiosities. My husband, perhaps buoyed by the spirits we had indulged in earlier, found amusement in the solemnity of our hosts. His laughter, too loud in the quiet of the shop, echoed off the walls, filling the space with a tension I could almost taste. Can you believe this stuff? He joked, picking up a small, intricately carved talisman without regard. All this talk of magic and spirits, it's just tourist traps, right? I felt a chill, a warning from some primal instinct as the woman's gaze hardened. Her voice, when she spoke, was calm, but carried an undercurrent of something I couldn't quite place. Was it anger or perhaps a warning? Respect, she said, is the currency of understanding. Dismiss what you do not understand at your peril. But my husband, undeterred and oblivious to the weight of her words, continued his mockery. I attempted to intervene, to smooth over the growing rift with an apologetic smile and a gentle nudge towards the door. We're just having a bit of fun, I said, my voice a mixture of embarrassment and plea. Mardi Gras, you know, spirits are high. The man, who had remained silent until then, fixed us with a look that seemed to see straight through to our souls. Some spirits, he murmured, are best left undisturbed. As we left the shop, a laugh escaped my husband, a release of the tension that had built up inside. But I couldn't shake the feeling of unease, the sense that our careless laughter had somehow invited something dark into our lives. The festive lights of the street no longer seemed quite as bright, and the air felt cooler, as if a shadow had passed over the sun. Unbeknownst to us, the die had been cast. In the heart of New Orleans, 
Amid the revelry of Mardi Gras, a sinister force had been awakened, summoned by disrespect and ready to claim its due. Our night of celebration was about to turn into a nightmare, a harrowing chase through the streets of a city that, for one terrifying night, would show us its hidden, merciless face. The festivities of Mardi Gras, once a vibrant tapestry of music and laughter, began to take on a sinister tone as the night deepened. The streets, alive with the thrum of celebration, now felt like a maze designed to disorient and confuse. It was amidst this chaos, with the night at its peak, that the true horror began. We had been wandering, caught up in the flow of masked revelers when the first howl pierced the night. It was a sound not of this world, a primal scream that seemed to freeze the very air. The crowd's laughter faltered, a collective shiver passing through the throng. But then the moment passed and the revelry resumed, the howl dismissed as part of the night's festivities. But then it came again, closer this time, a sound that curdled the blood and spoke of ancient, hungering rage. My heart seized within my chest, a premonition of doom washing over me. My husband, his earlier bravado vanished, gripped my hand tightly. What was that? He whispered, his voice barely carrying over the din of the crowd. Before I could answer, chaos erupted. The crowd around us surged in panic, screams melding with the music in a cacophony of fear. And through the madness it emerged, a beast from nightmare, its eyes burning with a malevolent light, its form a shadowy mass of muscle and fur, the Lugaru. The beast's gaze locked onto us, or perhaps onto my husband, the architect of our downfall. With a snarl, it launched itself through the crowd, which parted in terror. We ran, hand in hand, our hearts pounding as we dodged through alleys and over fences, the monster always at our heels, relentless and driven by a hunger for retribution. In our flight, the inevitable happened. We were separated. In a moment of sheer panic, a surge in the crowd tore us apart. My husband's hand slipped from mine and he was swallowed by the sea of bodies. I screamed his name, but my voice was lost in the tumult. Alone, I ran without direction, my mind numb with fear. The sounds of the beast's pursuit seemed to come from all directions, a psychological torment that pushed me to the edge of despair. I hid, crouched behind a dumpster in an alley shrouded in darkness, my breaths coming in ragged sobs. Then, silence. The sounds of the chase, the screams, even the distant music of Mardi Gras seemed to fade away. For a moment, I dared to hope, to believe that I had eluded the creature. But as I peered from my hiding place, I saw it, the loop guru, standing over a form that lay contorted on the ground. It was unmistakably my husband. The beast turned its gaze to me, its eyes glowing with an unholy light, and in that moment, I knew true despair. My husband's fate was sealed, and mine, a threadbare hope of escape. The Lou Guru, its mission of vengeance fulfilled, melted back into the shadows, leaving behind a silence that was more terrifying than its growl. I was alone, truly alone, in the aftermath of horror, with the knowledge that our disrespect had brought this nightmare upon us. And so I fled into the night, the echoes of my husband's fate, a specter that would haunt me, always just a step behind, as I navigated the once celebratory streets now turned labyrinthine traps, a survivor marked by terror, running from a horror that seemed to claim not just the night, but my very soul. In the aftermath of terror, with the night still cloaked around me, I found myself wandering, aimless and shattered. The vibrant festivities of Mardi Gras had transformed into a grotesque masquerade where laughter sounded like mockery and every shadow harbored nightmares. My heart, heavy with the loss of my husband and the weight of our folly, propelled me forward on autopilot, my feet leading me back to the origin of our doom, the voodoo shop. The door to the shop creaked open with an ominous groan, as if aware of the tragedy that had unfolded. The interior was just as we had left it, a cavern of arcane mysteries, but now it felt like a mausoleum each artifact a testament to the powers we had so foolishly scorned. The shop owners awaited me, their expressions unreadable. The air was thick with anticipation, or perhaps it was judgment. My voice, when it finally broke the silence, was a whisper, frayed with grief and fear. 
Please, I begged, the word barely a breath. Make it stop. Their eyes met mine, and in them I saw not anger, but a solemnity that was far more chilling. The spell has been cast, the woman said, her voice a harbinger of unwelcome truths. But it was not a spell that summoned the loop guru. You come here demanding of us that which only you can do. Her partner added, his tone final. Its hunger has been satisfied, for now. But the spirit, it has you, child. Take a long look in the mirror and tell me you do not see its mark. The man gestured at an ancient mirror caked with dusty cobwebs. My mind went back to that moment I saw my dead husband as I cowered in fear of my life behind that dumpster, and it all got foggy. I recalled the taste of blood on my lips and power surging through me as I, I tore my gaze away from the mirror and flew out of the shop in a panic, back out onto the streets, back into a crowd that had already forgotten what happened, into a smorgasbord of drunken tourists from which to feed and sate the overwhelming hunger gnawing inside me.